Hello and welcome to my channel again. If you are new here, my name is Diana. I'm a new mom. I have an eight month and a half baby boy and I struggled with breastfeeding after I gave birth and I thought I'm gonna do a video and talk about it and share it with you. But before I uh, became a mom, before I got pregnant, I always had this dream uh, I had this thing in my head that I want to breastfeed my baby when I'm going to have one because I know it's the best nutrition they can get is long term it's the best thing you can do for your baby to uh, breastfeed them if you cannot or if you choose not to it's fine I'm not going to judge you it's up to you what's just happened? I just sat here to film uh, my breastfeeding struggle story and I don't know if you saw in the video I was looking outside because I could see the tree coming so close to the house it broke one huge branch broke here in front of our house <laughs> oh my goodness look and it's 4th of July I don't know if anyone can come and <laughs> oh my goodness I can't believe this happened Okay, now <laughs> back to my video. Okay, so back to... I don't even remember what I was saying. I don't remember. I need to look back. Okay, I'm gonna try to film <laughs> this again, but Alex is downstairs with his dad and he's being so loud and sometimes I think you can hear him in the background. I was saying I, I wanted so bad to breastfeed when I'm gonna have a baby and... Um, because that's the best thing you can do for your baby like long term and if you cannot breastfeed or if you cannot uh, you choose not to breastfeed it's fine I don't judge anyone you know it's up to you that's just me that's my experience that's what I believe in and so when I was um, uh, 38 weeks and five days pregnant I had to be induced due to high blood pressure and they tried to induce me for like three days because I wasn't dilating and it's like they're forcing your body to go into labor and after three days when I finally got to 10 centimeters I had to push and my baby's heart rate would drop because uh, the cord was wrapped around his shoulder and uh, I couldn't give uh, birth natural, normal and I ended up having a, an emergency c-section and when you have an emergency c-section the milk doesn't come in as fast as when you have a normal birth. That's what I know and that's what I believe. So I had a surgery and when I was out of the surgery, they gave me my baby. I tried to nurse him. He kind of latched. I couldn't tell because it was first time for me to nurse a baby, my baby, you know, my first baby. So I didn't know what to expect. And uh, it was kind of painful I don't know why I was so sore here and painful like in one day one nipple already started bleeding and um, I asked one of the nurses I was like how do I know if he's getting any milk because it's so painful for me I cannot feel anything and I don't know I want to make sure he's getting uh, milk and because I was in so much pain and it was a uh, not easy for me to breastfeed she gave me this nipple shield and you put it on top of your nipple and then you nurse your baby and um, when he was done nursing I could tell there was some uh, that was the colostrum because the first milk you have is the colostrum that's the best uh, uh, thing your baby needs after giving birth and I could tell there was some left on the walls of the nipple shield and that's how I knew he was getting something, but I couldn't tell if it's enough, if he needs more, you know, you never know. And um, so she gave me this and um, I was using this every time I had to breastfeed. And I was constantly washing this because they gave me only one. And then when we got back from the hospital, I bought a few more so I have extra. But in the hospital, I had only one. And it was such a headache to wash it and anyways. So I gave birth on Saturday morning and on Monday morning they asked me if I'm okay, everything is okay. And I said yes, I would like to go home if it's possible. 
because in the hospital they come and check on you every two hours and you never get to relax or to rest there's always someone coming in and check on you and your baby and I just wanted to go home and relax and be in my own environment even though I was in pain from the c-section I said I want to go home just give me some painkillers and I will manage and um, before they release you before uh, you have the clearance to go home uh, they have to I think they did a blood sugar test they tested Alex and his blood sugar was low I'm not sure if it was blood sugar something I think it was a blood sugar and it was really low and they said um, that he wasn't getting enough milk maybe I didn't have enough and uh, because of the c-section my milk wasn't in yet or something like that so they suggested giving formula and I remember I don't know why I was against formula because I wanted to breastfeed so bad maybe so I um, I started crying I was upset with myself my body because I didn't have milk to breastfeed my baby I remember I was crying I thought I'm not gonna be able to nurse him ever I don't know why I was you know you go through so much stress and trauma like birth is a trauma and especially because I had the c-section and you're sleep deprived and all this together um, I didn't know what to think and I was so depressed and crying in the hospital and I asked my husband to go and buy a mother's milk tea and lactation cookies so I can have those and boost my milk supply I wanted to do something about <laughs> you know about that and um, he couldn't find the lactation cookies but he got the tea the mother's milk tea and uh, I was drinking that like lots in the hospital we started giving him formula and uh, I don't remember how many ounces but I remember it was like little bottles for newborns and you only give half and then um, the, the other half if you don't use it within an hour you have to discard it so it was like a waste every two three hours I would give him half of that bottle and then I would still have to nurse so I can produce the milk I was crying when I had to nurse I don't know why it was so painful maybe the way he was latching or I don't know it was really sensitive this uh, area a lactation consultant came in the hospital to see us and she checked his mouth and she had a look at his tongue and she said he has a tongue tie a tongue tie is a uh, this thing that connects your tongue to the I don't know how to call it to your jaw here not jaw but you know what I mean uh, it was short and he couldn't latch perfectly like normal and she said the only way to um, latch and not have any pain anymore is to go and fix his tongue tie one of those days as soon as possible oh that was another stress for me oh I can hear Alex <laughs> yelling <laughs> and um, eventually the next day they, st they tested his blood again and he was okay to go home and we came home and uh, we had the same problem he wasn't latching uh, right and uh, it was painful i would always have to use this and they also gave me this uh, comfort gel pad you keep it in the fridge and then after you're done nursing you apply it on your nipple to you know to take some of that uh, discomfort and um, I would uh, even though I was so sleep deprived I would still wake up to three hours at night to check on him and make sure he wants to nurse even though I was giving him formula so I think we gave formula for like three days and then I didn't want to give him formula anymore I said I want uh, to my best I'm gonna spend all night if I have to to nurse him and um, stop giving the formula my milk came in but it was painful the, he, because he wasn't latching normal the right way and it was so painful and I was crying most of the time when it was time to nurse it was such a stress for me it was like a torture 
and then we uh, looked for a lactation consultant to come to our house and have a look at um, how I position him, how he nurses and so she can teach me what to do because I wanted to uh, not have, not be in pain anymore. <coughs> So she came one time and she spent maybe like an hour or two and uh, she looked at how he was uh, nursing, how, was, uh, how I was holding him and she showed me how to do this and that. And she also checked his mouth and she said he's got a little bit of tongue tie and uh, she recommends fixing that. And a week after she came I still had problems nursing. Uh, I wasn't pumping at that time because um, it was so painful, I didn't want, I felt like the pump was more painful than when he was nursing, I don't know why, it was really bad. And um, one week later we called her and we asked her to come again and check and see what I'm doing wrong because I was still having problems nursing him and I remember I was spending one hour and a half to up to two hours a night trying to nurse him because I would put him down and he would still cry and I thought maybe he's still hungry so I would pick him up again and try and nurse him again and it was keep going I remember my husband was like because he wanted to sleep he was like let me give him some formula and I was like no I don't want to give him formula anymore I want to breastfeed him I'm gonna spend all night here if I have to and make sure he gets all the milk he needs and she came again a week later, she showed me this and that, um, I don't know, it was such a stress. I also used um, this um, Theraprol breast therapy, you can use it um, cold or uh, warm, I was using this cold together with the gel pads because Oh my goodness, it was torture. The first month, it was a torture for me. Breastfeeding and the C-section and all this, it was hard for me to move, it was hard to do things. I always had to ask my husband and it's not easy. And this is the pillow I used to nurse him because of the C-section. I had to use something really high so it doesn't press on my surgery and uh, this one really helped me. I just face him on top here and uh, you know <laughs> try nursing for hours so after a month it got a little better even today I still don't think he's 100% latching perfectly nursing the way he's supposed to in December last year when he was two months old we had an appointment to go fix his tongue tie and we went to the appointment and that week before the appointment for me was like I was stressing so much, I was crying, I didn't just thinking that he needs to have a little cut under his tongue and what if it's gonna hurt him and then I'm gonna have to apply I don't know what and it's gonna be painful for him when he nurses and just that whole picture in my head was so we went to the appointment and uh, apparently they called us to reschedule, they called my husband, but because he was out of the country, they left a voice message and he never got to listen to it. So there was no appointment. And uh, uh, the doctor had to go, I think he was from India, and he had to go for holidays to see his family. And uh, they asked us to reschedule, and until today we never rescheduled. I thought that... If it wasn't meant to happen that day, then I'm not going to do it anymore. So we never fixed his tongue tie and I don't know if it's still a problem or not. But like I said, sometimes I feel like he's still not latching the uh, right way. But he's nursing, he's gaining weight, he's a uh, healthy and big boy and um, I'm fine with that. It got better with time, so like I said, in the beginning it wasn't easy. It was really painful, I struggled a lot, I had to keep, um, I said I'm going to sacrifice myself if I have to, just to make sure he's getting the right nutrition, all he can get from my milk, and um, 
Like I said, I spent so much time, but it got better with time. And a month later, I started pumping to uh, um, stock up on uh, milk to have it just in case we ever need it. And I'm not uh, next, uh, if I'm not around him. Like I said, I think he's fine now. He's nursing okay because, but why I'm saying I don't think he's uh, nursing the right way until today because when he's done nursing the nipple looks like a lipstick and that's the it shouldn't look like that it should be round that's why i think but i never went to check anymore i don't care anymore he's fine and that's kind of my uh, breastfeeding struggle story and um i'm glad it's over <laughs> i hope you enjoyed my video thank you for watching and if you struggle with breastfeeding uh Please know that it's gonna get better with time. It's not gonna last forever. And um, if you think you cannot do it anymore and if you wanna switch to formula, that's fine too, if you wanna do that. I didn't wanna do that. Being a new mom, I think it's really hard. I filmed my uh, breastfeeding video earlier, but I just remembered something because of what happened with the tree, that branch, I kind of lost my uh, thoughts, my idea. And um, I forgot to mention that in January, so when Alex was like three months, close to four months old, I had mastitis. I remember I woke up one night and um, I was feeling like I'm getting sick. I had a high fever, I was shivering, but my throat was fine, my nose was fine. So uh, next day I uh, went to the doctor and uh, it proved that I had mastitis. I had one blocked duct. I think my left uh, breast was uh, the one affected and they prescribed me antibiotics for 10 days but I still had to breastfeed on that side which was a little painful but not that bad as in the beginning. So uh, yeah, it felt weird that I got mastitis so late. Uh, you know usually you get it in the first or two months but anyways so this is one thing i wanted to mention and i'm gonna insert it in the video and uh, i know it's a little i don't know what's wrong with me lately with these videos but thank you for watching hope you enjoyed my video and please don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next one bye <laughs>